Coleman rapping? Yeah. Are you sure? It's the same chord? Yeah, it's the same chord. Okay, let me see if I can repeat the details. Okay, what do you call uh, Ethiopian spicy? What do you call like, nickel? I mean, what do you call I can do that. I got that. I got this one. Thank you, Brother Chino. Make sure you get the linebackers in that. No. Jan, no. I think it's a new guy. <laughs> okay, and when they pass, you usually don't have to go way up in the air because it hits the right. Okay. okay, like, see, these guys will get in their defense before. Before uh, the offense comes up. So you kind of look and get where all the defensive guys are. And then make make sure you get the linebackers and stuff. This is recording everything. So. Oh, <laughs> I am fucked the wrong thing. I think I'm fucked the mic. Can't.
Farmer Brown. Farmer Brown. Farmer Brown. There you go. Back to the pass. Get up. Lincoln? No, it's not.
when you do it, focus in. Do it. Yeah, I saw that one. So you know what you do is, just as soon as they get going, just start closing up in with the guy on the ball. So you can see him better. There's a lot of guys just standing around with nothing.
Let's see your ugly hands.
I got mine long time ago, man. Put the donut on the street, somebody. I got mine. Let's see. Hey, move your head, Nilton. Oh, shit. Get down, Nilton. Is it that going to stop running? Got mine a long time ago. Dang it. Got mine, um, seven months. I missed that one. You got a car I can drive home? Got my own car, too, Jeez. man. Look at that. You don't have your own car. Oh, that's for gas. That's... Car. Where's the Ford, gas? Man. Where do you get the gas at? The store. Yeah, but you don't have to keep all the gas in. Yeah, too, that's the hey. gas key. Dan, what clock? I'm losing my concentration. <laughs> I sit there listening to you. <laughs> Whoa, where'd it go? Where's your car? What's your car? That white pickup. <laughs> Who should we take cruising? Harley brought her jeep. Chick dip. That. She didn't want she to drive in a stick. Those are fun, man. Well, she thought she wouldn't be able to pass. Move your face. I don't I'd pass it on that, too. It's automatic, so it aren't easy. Shift stick's fun to drive, though. Yeah. Alright, you can even drive a stick shift. Yeah. <laughs> I've driven a stick shift. Can you kill out of them? Can you kill out? That's fun, my dad. I kick my butt. <laughs> I'll kill out and pick up all the time. That's fun. Hey, Rodney. Yeah. Rodney, you should have your mom let me drive your jig, but we don't lost if it wrecked. She gave me the station wagon. This is the newest vehicle we have. Really? Yeah. Really? You what guys girl have a new station up? wagon? No, that one. one. Hey, I'll trade your... Trade your station wagon for the jig. <laughs> yeah, well, the game's over, Ross. Right? The game's over, buddy. Yeah, that's right. Why dad's trying to get rid of There was a, there was a. Because the French king? No. Oh, so I can use those. Get cheap. Scram. James, not over. Shit. See what you yeah, know about the football. Mr. Stinger, get me right home. <laughs> no, I got my own car. Yeah. I'm going, the game's over. You know it isn't. Well, I, 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 I'll go see which girl's going to ride home. Hey, Rodney. Are you going to go to dance? Are you going to dance? Yeah. Now you always dance when you go to dances. What I'm else are they going to do? I said, is he going to go to the dance? I'm not
How come nobody's keeping score? Because it's a scrimmage. What? Because when they turn the power on in this building, well, no, it was on the board. Oh, okay. They're just seeing who their best players are right now. And teaching me how to use this stupid thing. Haven't you worked the camera before? What? Haven't you worked one before? No. I've worked with my dad's in the workshop. Well, we don't have one. Excuse me. This is my team.
concerned. Well, we should sing you right where the ball was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of scared around it. Right. I think it's moving all by itself. It'd be a lot easier. Here's <laughs> a, a white ball. Well, I love this one. Black and white. You need a white one. Bright, bright one. Keep reaching. Be bad. Oh, come up here, buddy. Come on. You gonna play next year, Gary? I would, man, if I were you. Be bad. I almost hit that ball. I got behind. Man, you're killing me. We'll win every time. Oh, Why not? Well, yeah. I'll move your head, Gary. All I see is USA Adidas. Is he in the way? Yeah. Is it recording? Yeah, it still is. Oh, it's okay. Oh, you know what Adidas stands for? Adidas stands for? What is it? I got a pair of Adidas shoes. Gary Jones. Gary Jones. Oh, 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 oh. Watch Jeremy. Watch him have a fight. Jeremy's trying to Oh, I had that in a little ways. Watch that kid get sporty. He's right in front of him. Oh. He's right in front of him. Leave him out. He's funny right in the face. Watch Leland. Watch Leland do it. Oh, it's so funny you guys are doing Oh, Gary, I wasn't asking you where. I was asking where they're going to put the ball in. Okay. Got it. The hard part's fine. Because this, this doesn't point to it. You have it put down. Uh -huh. <laughs>
The 1984 Dallas Cowboys are brought to you by Kodacolor VR Films. Kodak's brightest, sharpest color print films ever. Kodak Film, because time goes by. of Texas Stadium long have been corridors of power in the National Football League. But this season, the Dallas Cowboys' usual stroll to the playoffs became a maze out of which they could not find their way. In one glorious moment, the Cowboys fielded their finest squad ever. Unfortunately, this club could not help Tom Landry, for it was comprised of players elected to the Silver Anniversary team. Absent this season were nine key veterans. Instead of household names like Pearson, Martin, Donovan, and Dupree, the roster of America's team was somewhat anonymous. This silver season had a different look, one where the Cowboys fell back to spring ahead, a year that offered glimpses of brighter horizons. Opening night saw the team touch down in Los Angeles, where quarterback Gary Hogaboom sent the Cowboys airborne with 350 yards passing. The defense intercepted five passes to seal a 20 to 13 victory. The Cowboys went on to win four of their first five games with a cavalcade of game-breaking plays. First down, we got a little uh, quick screen to Renfro, who's throwing deep to Donnelly, and it is caught! Boy, they're coming. They're coming like gangbusters. If you get off the screen, door set at the 30, 35, 40, 45, midfield. One man to beat. He's to the gone. 30 yard line. He's, he's gone. gone. He's gone. Hey. That's a 70 yard touchdown for Tony Dorsett. After five weeks, it seemed like business as usual in Dallas. And the playoffs looked like money in the bank. <laughs> On the surface, the Cowboys appeared to be quite dazzling. But their early successes proved merely cosmetic. For without makeup, they did not stand up to close inspection. The offense was never synchronized in 1984, scoring 171 fewer points than the previous year. They allowed 48 sacks and often broke down in critical situations. What began as an orderly march to the NFC Eastern title took an about face, and the Cowboys were forced to retreat. The St. Louis Cardinals rolled to a 31 to 20 victory. Then the Washington Redskins pranced to an easy 34 to 14 win. Two shocking losses to division rivals were followed by a grim contest with the New Orleans Saints. Trailing 27 to six in the third quarter, the Cowboys launched the biggest comeback in their 25 year history. The rally was spurred by a defense that choked off the Saints passing attack and finally caught them in a stranglehold in the fourth quarter. Big play, three minutes left. Saints up by seven. Stabler to throw. Here comes the pressure. Set! And Lobo! Oh, Lobo! It is a touchdown! Ah! Oh. <laughs> Lobo is down! Randy White falls. Stabler and the ball came loose. And Jeffcoat recovered. You gotta believe, Brad! Jim Jeffcoat's touchdown sent the game into overtime and onto the toe of Raphael Septien. The crowd will tell you if the Cowboys win on the kick. Good snap, good hold, kick up. Cowboys win! The overtime win was a watershed victory for the Cowboys and focused attention on the special teams, a unit that went all out all season. 
Here, rookies and young cowboys began to build confidence and reputations. Youngsters like Billy Cannon, Carl Howard, Victor Scott, Vince Albritton, Steve Diossi, and Jeff Rohrer learned that solid hits were stepping stones to a starting job. Such a player is special teams captain Bill Bates, the Tennessee tough guy whose winning attitude, competitive spirit, and all-out play on coverage teams impressed many, including his coach. I think Bill Bates had a lot to do with bringing the specialty player back again in the NFL. Just the fact that at the end of the year, the NFL alumni honored him as a special player, that's a tremendous boost for all those guys that play on those specialty teams. And it's contagious, really. When you see a Bill Bates come in and play and hit and attack the way he does, boy, it has a real good effect upon your team. I was ingrained to playing hard nose football ever since I was eight years old, playing for a team called the Headhunters. And uh, I've always enjoyed football. I've enjoyed the hitting part of it. You know, ever since I've been growing up, I've been uh, talented as made, maybe being like a Charlie Waters or a Cliff Harris type player. Number 40 is like a human cannonball. And when his fuse is lit, Bates can be very explosive indeed. They like free agents to come in to make their team, and just kind of made them more of America's team, giving the guy that walking down the street the chance to play football. And, and I just want everybody to know that no matter who they are, you know, if you are playing football and you think you've got the desire and ability to, to play, then you've got the chance. you just got to do it. Bates maintained the cowboy tradition of turning unknown players into Pro Bowl performers. But what worried Tom Landry was supply and demand. The Cowboys desperately needed depth from the draft. Eugene Lockhart, the number six pick studied under retiring star Bob Brunig, stepped into the middle linebacker slot and became known as Mean Gene, the hitting machine. Playing alongside All-Pro Randy White for a full season, transformed second-year defensive end Jim Jeffco from a player with potential into a potential star. Once Jeffcoat got the hang of the flex, he had quarterbacks on the end of a rope and collected 11 and a half sacks. These young players were needed down the stretch. The Cowboys stood at six and four when they faced the Cardinals in St. Louis. Since all four losses were within the division, another defeat would cripple their playoff hopes. Slipping their backs into the secondary, the Cowboys used touchdowns by James Jones and Ron Springs to upset the Cardinals 24 to 17. But the topsy-turvy nature of their season was reflected by a harsh 14 to 3 loss the following week in Buffalo. The failure to score a touchdown marked an offensive deficiency that plagued both Danny White and Gary Hogaboom for most of 1984. The quarterbacks, hamstrung by a severely depleted and crippled offensive line, never knew from week to week who was healthy enough to block for them. Lacking a solid pocket meant life on the run for both quarterbacks and makeshift line combinations and injured receivers were largely responsible for the radical drop-off in point production. One player who did score points was number 30, Timmy Newsom, a battering ram near the end zone.
Palm Springs number 20 could turn ordinary plays right into extraordinary to touchdowns. Over the middle. Springs, nice catch, gets away. 40-yard line, 30-yard line, 20, a foot race, 10, 5, touchdown, Cowboys! A welcome addition to the receiving core was Mike Renfro. Renfro, acquired as a situation specialist, became a starter and produced the highest average per catch of any receiver. When he recovered from a shoulder separation, Tony Hill remained the premier deep threat. In an off year, number 80 still gained the most yards and scored more touchdowns than any Cowboy pass catcher. Tight end Doug Cosby was the most consistent and durable receiver. Number 84 is blessed with intense concentration and the willingness to take the toughest punishment an opponent can dish out. Cosby's reception total paced the Cowboys, and his 60 catches ranked second among tight ends in the National Football Conference. While their offensive woes were uncharacteristic, they were still in the casting call for the playoffs, a role which has always been tailor-made for them. color VR films. Films as vibrant and as sensitive as the faces and places that bring this land together. And as far as I can see, there's no place I'd rather be than riding free in America. Kodak Film, because time goes by. The Cowboys needed 10 gallons of tenacity to reach the playoffs for the 18th time in 19 years. And the gallop down the stretch was mounted on defense. A 13th week victory over the Patriots was keyed by All-Pro Michael Downs, number 26. Things came in bunches. The following week, Dennis Thurman touched off a win over the Eagles with a similar play. Thurman's touchdown and seven quarterback sacks ensured a 26 to 10 victory. And Pisarchi with a play fake and a throw. Here comes Dutton. Got him for a safety in the end zone. The Cowboys' record read nine and five. They were tied atop the NFC East with the Redskins and Giants. Atop the division had a nice familiar ring to it. And so did the frightening sounds coming from another familiar voice, the doomsday defense. <laughs> what the defense did best was sack the quarterback. The Cowboys blitzed and then blitzed some more. Safeties like Dexter Klinkscale and Michael Downs and linebackers like Anthony Dickerson and Mike Hegman swarmed the field. Up front came White, Jeff Coat, John Dutton, Don Smerrick, and Ed Tutal Jones. They came anytime, anywhere, and from every direction. Fifty-seven quarterback traps made life easier for cornerbacks Ron Fellows and Everson Walls, number 24.
Summer 26, Michael Downs was everywhere. He led the team in tackles. He roamed the secondary, producing seven interceptions, a club high. A quick blitz up the gut led to Downstown, a place where no quarterback wanted to be left alone. Downs played like an all-pro all season, a season that had wound down to the final two weeks. Victory over the arch-rival Redskins would guarantee the Cowboys a playoff berth. The offensive line of Peterson, Scott, Baldinger, Titanser, Rafferty, and Paz Derrick, so often injured, so often criticized, were the building blocks around which a seemingly insurmountable lead was built. A skillfully designed offense baffled the Redskins beating them short and deep. Right back to throw deep. Renfro, right sideline, caught at the 25 20. 15 makes a move to the 10. Renfro, touchdown, Cowboys! After teetering on a tightrope for most of this silver season, the Cowboys' path became a straight and narrow shaft to sunlight. The Cowboys sprinted to a 21-6 halftime lead. But when the race became a marathon of Cowboy mistakes, the Redskins passed them in the third quarter. White back to throw. Springs gets him a block. Throw it deep for Tony Hill. Hill makes the catch at the five. Goes in for the easy touchdown. The Cowboys clawed back into the lead, 28 to 23. But the victory hinged on a controversial play at the goal line. On the one, split backs this time. And off Riggins up the middle. No, Jeff Rohr, Steve Diasi, Gene Lockhart, they call it a touchdown. Oh, I thought they had him pushed back. While one door to the playoff slammed shut, another one opened in Miami. identical plays captured the joy and the frustration of the 1984 season. In the first quarter, Ron Fellows stole the ball from number 83, Mark Clayton. In the fourth quarter, with the score tied at 14, a cowboy blitz left Fellows vulnerable, and only a split second separated his second interception from Clayton's touchdown. Dolphins led 21 to 14 with exactly two minutes remaining in the 1984 season. Cowboys from the shotgun in the two-minute period. White back to throw. Left side. In. Oh, no, it's tipped and caught. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a touchdown. This is going to be a deflected touchdown to Tony Hill. This is the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. The Cowboys have just scored. Oh, Tony Hill's miraculous play Boy, tied crazy. the game at 21, but this was not to be a silver season of miracles for the Dallas Cowboys. At the 45, 40, good night. Clayton for the touchdown. Defensive back fell down. For the second straight week, victory was snatched from the Cowboys' grasp in the final minute. And for the first time in 10 years, they would not be going to the playoffs. Dallas Cowboys extended an NFL record with their 19th straight winning season and will greet next year with far greater spirit and unity than they began 1984. Two major reasons are their team captains, Randy White on defense and Tony Dorsett on offense. Dorsett enjoyed his greatest season even though he found more dead ends than open spaces.
what he did find was more ways to beat an opponent. Number 33 polished skills he already possessed and displayed others that few had ever witnessed. Tony exhibited a toughness, both mental and physical, that pushed him over a thousand yards rushing. And once in sight of a touchdown, his natural instincts led him to six points. set was a man on the move. Randy White was the immovable man. Despite being hacked at, cut, clipped, double and triple teamed, number 54 recorded 12 and a half sacks, the most by a defensive tackle in the NFL. Once you hit the field, you don't worry about getting double teamed or, or triple teamed or, or anything else. Your, your main objective is to do the job that you're supposed to do. If it's get the quarterback, you get the quarterback. And uh, anything standing in your path, you try and get them out of your way and get your job done. To get recognition, you have to have a lot of quarterback tracks. So it, it's a gratifying thing to get back there and get the quarterback. But I get as much satisfaction out of making a good play on a running play as I do trapping the quarterback sometimes. He's a fighter. He's a winner. The only way he's going to ever get him to quit is to shoot him. Uh, he's going to keep coming at you every down, every play, until the whistle blows, until the clock runs out. But those are the kind of guy that you don't look forward to playing in front of. He has a great desire not to be embarrassed. He doesn't want anyone being able to beat him. Randy White and Tony Dorsett personify a team with a tradition of excellence. 1985 will be a season of high expectations, for this is a team tied to its past and bound to the future. At their silver anniversary celebration, the Dallas Cowboys remembered old heroes, last second victories, and world championships. But their vision is pointed toward tomorrow. And tomorrow began the morning after the night fell on the 1984 season. The 1984 Washington Redskins are brought to you by Kodakolor VR Films, Kodak's brightest, sharpest color print films ever. Kodak Film, because time goes by. Program, Redskin program here. Program here, Redskin programs. Program, Redskin program here. Program here, Redskin program. Programs here. Program, Redskin program here. In 1984, the Washington Redskins once again fought their way to a division title. So too did the intimidating Chicago Bears. And when these NFL heavyweights squared off in the playoffs, they exchanged punishing blows like a couple of tireless bare-knuckle brawlers. Even 
though Chicago took an early lead in this knock them down drag them out affair, the tenacious Redskins kept on swinging. as they entered the final quarter. The Redskins' defense shut down Chicago. Unfortunately for Washington, the offense was unable to make up the difference, and the Redskins' season ended in frustrating and unfamiliar fashion. Washington had never lost a playoff game at home, and for the first time in three years, the Redskins would not play in the Super Bowl. Winning a third straight division championship was a great achievement, but it was an accomplishment that fell short of the Washington Redskins' lofty expectations. Typically, head coach Joe Gibbs had everything firmly in place when the Redskins raised their dupes for the 1984 opener at home against the Miami Dolphins. Quarterback Joe Theismann was back at work directing traffic, while the offensive line was once again busy paving new roads for John Riggins' journey up the NFL's all-time leading rusher list. With the diesel in overdrive, the Redskins anticipated a smooth ride through the season's early weeks. But on this day, the Dolphins' mode of transportation into the end zone proved to be more effective. A 35 to 17 loss started the new season on a sour note that was still ringing in Washington's ear the following week. The setting was ideal for the Redskins to turn themselves into winners, and as the game wore on, the transformation began to take place. After trailing 27 to nothing, Washington battled back to within six points. But the 49ers stalled Washington's comeback efforts. And suddenly, a team that had come to take winning for granted was winless after two games. I think at one time we were starting to believe we were invincible and we're not that kind of football team. If all 22 guys aren't playing to their maximum and even, even a little bit better than that, then we're, we can become a very average football team. We have tough people that have to do a great job playing together for us to be successful. The Redskins had allowed over 70 points in their first two games. However, in week three against the Giants, Washington firmed up its defense. The Redskins' defensive wall stood strong in consecutive wins over the Giants, Patriots, Eagles, and Colts. The defense gave up only four touchdowns during that stretch, and by the time Dallas rode into town in week seven, the Redskins were anxious to deliver a little frontier justice to the Cowboys. Most Redskin Cowboy games are as tight as a noose, but in this contest, Washington hung the Cowboys out to dry. Second down and long, Hogan moves the pass out of the left side, picked off, it's gone, Bonnie Coleman, he's gone for a touchdown. Snap, buys them, little dash pattern out here to the right. First one of those we've seen today. Going deep, got Muhammad, wide open, caught it to 25, he's gone! Touchdown, Washington Redskins! Washington handed Dallas one of its worst defeats of the season, 34-14, to and the Redskins' fifth straight win placed them all alone atop the NFC East.
After seven weeks of the season, Washington's successful fight for first was largely due to the aggressive Redskin defense. Anchoring this unit was middle linebacker Neil Olkowitz, number 52. Olkowitz led the team in tackles and received support from Larry Coogan, Mel Kaufman, number 55, and Rich Malott, number 57. While Malott's four sacks gave the Redskins' pass rush a lift, number 51 Monty Coleman's ten and a half knockdowns helped send it into orbit. In 1984, Washington established a new team record with 66 sacks, and setting the pace with 13 and a half was defensive end Dexter Manley. Despite his man-size accomplishments, Dexter plays football with a refreshing youthfulness. And like a kid on a playground, he often says the darndest things. Sometimes I say things that will offend the opponents, and I don't think that's too good. So I think the best thing for me to do and try to get more knowledgeable and wise is to be quiet and just let my action do the talking. Last season, Manley's actions left most of his opponents speechless, as number 72 led the third best sack pack in NFL history. Also contributing to Washington sack total were Tony McGee, Perry Brooks, Tom Beasley, and number 71, Charles Mann. Mann recorded seven and a half sacks, as did Darrell Grant, number 77, who many thought was the Redskins' most valuable defensive player. Washington's successful pass rush was made possible by the NFL's second stingiest run defense, built around a rock of a man, tackle Dave Butts. Playing a position that requires holding your ground, Butts was the NFL's most immovable object. At 6'7", 295, Butts doesn't tackle ball carriers. He engulfs them. While Washington's defensive backs may not match the big tackle's physical stature, in terms of toughness, they measure up inch for inch. Taking advantage of every opportunity to seek out the football, this crew was led by Curtis Jordan, number 22, the team's second leading tackler. Opportunistic as well as rugged, Jordan, Ken Coffey, Anthony Washington, Ricky Smith, Greg Williams, and Pro Bowl starter Darrell Green, number 28, all contributed to the team's 43 takeaways, second best in the NFC. With Mark Murphy, 1983's leading interceptor, injured for much of the season, number 32, Vernon Dean, stepped forward and intercepted a team-high seven passes. two of his thefts for touchdowns, and his efforts typified the big defensive counter punches that struck crucial blows in the Redskins' drive to remain champions. VR Films. Films as vibrant and as sensitive as the faces and places that bring this land together. And as far as I can see, there's no place I'd rather be than riding free 
in America. Kodak film, because time goes by. At the season's midway point, the defending champion Redskins were still holding their ground in the NFC East. With a 5-3 and three record, Washington remained in the tight race for first, despite injuries that would have knocked out most teams. At various points in the season, a league-high 30 players were placed on injured reserve, and four Pro Bowl selections missed half the season. Although the offensive line was burdened with serious injuries to number 61, Ken Huff, and starters Jeff Bostick and George Stark, this unit still had no trouble shouldering the load. The offensive line are the legs of the football team. Where they go, the team goes. We've got, I think, the best offensive line in the league, and I think I'm sure there were many other guys that are a lot more astute on the on football than I am that would say the same thing. He comes over in that position. In 1984, Pro Bowlers Joe Jacoby and Russ Grimm, along with Bostick, May, Stark, Donnelly, and Huff, once again successfully parted the seas of defenders for running backs John Riggins, Joe Washington, Otis Wansley, number 39, and rookie Keith Griffin, number 35. Griffin replaced the injured Washington and finished as the team's second leading rusher. Thanks to the offensive line, the Redskins' ground game made great strides. However, no one benefited more from the blocking up front than quarterback Joe Theismann. Theismann's big plays and gutsy determination provided the spark to ignite the championship fire. Washington outscored every NFL team but Miami and San Francisco. And the hustling signal caller placed tops among NFL quarterbacks with 314 yards rushing. Theismann also set career club records for passing yards, attempts, and completions with the help of receivers Don Warren, Rick Walker, Clint Didier, and Charlie Brown, number 87. The two-time Pro Bowler Brown was lost for much of the season. However, the Redskins general manager, Bobby Beathard, acquired another gem in Calvin Muhammad, number 89. Muhammad's 42 catches for over 700 yards were second only to last season's premier wide receiver, Art Monk, number 81. Nicknamed Money for his ability to make the clutch catch, Monk cashed in on all his skills in 1984 as he gained 1,372 yards and caught an NFL record 106 passes. Third down and five, a long five. Back is Theismann, straight drop, steps up, fires it down the far side, he's got it complete, come on! There's the record at the 30, he's down to the 20, inside the 20, and out of bounds at the 17. Art Monk has just broken the National Football League record for receptions in a single season. The That's crowd the is on its feet. They should be, what a great record to break, and a well-deserved honor for Art Monk. They're going to give him the ball. Jerry Markbright just called timeout. And he's personally going to hand him the ball. He shook his hand. And he says, congratulations, Art. Art is going to bring it to the sideline now. His players are all going out to greet him. That's a great tribute right there for him. While Monk sat on the throne of the Redskins' kingdom last year, Rigonomics remained the leading subject. After years as the Redskins' workhorse back, John Riggins may need a little more rest these days, but when it comes time to pull the wagon, he's always ready to hitch it up. In terms of toughness and running the football, especially the power type football we play, there's a certain amount of respect that takes place between John, for example, and the offensive line. John is a tough man. Riggins' fifth 1,000-yard season put him over the 10,000-yard milestone and he now ranks fifth among pro football's all-time leading rushers and holds 17 club records. 
The Diesel scored 14 touchdowns last season, proving at 35 he still has a nose for the end zone. It just takes a little more effort to get there. John's an amazing guy, a gifted guy from a body standpoint. Got a great body. Highly motivated. There's no reason for him to be wanting to come back. He's done about everything he can do, yet he's got a real drive, and we'll see how long he can go. Considering the average career of an NFL back is five years, Riggins' 13 seasons are a truly unique achievement, perfectly befitting a truly unique football player. In 1984, the special teams once again ran under the football with the same hard-nosed determination that Riggins ran with it tucked under his arm. While Rich Morty, Greg Williams, Anthony Jones, Pete Cronin, and Otis Wansley comprise the heart of this rock and roll group, returner Mike Nelms was the designated bearer of bad news for opposing kickers. Nelms returned kicks for over 1,000 yards for the fourth time in his five-year career, and his running ability proved to be an inspiration to redskin punter Jeff Hayes. Highly skilled special teams are a tradition in Washington as are crucial late season games against the Cowboys. Dallas is not the place to bring aspirations of a division championship, but tied with the Cowboys and Giants at nine and five and needing two wins for the division title, Washington had very little choice. From the outset, Washington's title and playoff hopes were in jeopardy as Dallas jumped to an early lead. Danny White with a little bootleg to the right, tied in, touchdown pass. Dallas Cowboys. When you're hot, you're hot. Right now, the Cowboys are, they're steaming, aren't they? Oh, these fans love it when they're, when they're doing good. Just remember one thing, that's why they play two halves. That's right. Yeah. Trailing 21 to six, it was time to create a real TV drama in Dallas. In the second half, Cowboy quarterback Danny White was intent on picking up where he left off. But the Redskin defense had other ideas. Danny White is in the shotgun formation. Redskins coming with a blitz after him. Throws it near side. Picked off. Darrell Green's got it. The 25, 20. Bye-bye. Defense. Touchdown. Washington Redskins. Play. Whoa, there's a big play for Daryl Green. That's After what they getting need. burned. That's what they needed. Oh, that puts the Redskins right back in the game, doesn't it? Boy, it does. Seconds later, Theismann pulled the Redskins to within a point. And with the Cowboys staggering, the defense reared back and went for the knockout. was held to a single touchdown in the second half. And midway through the final quarter, Riggins scored the game winner. Theisman takes the snap. Riggins up over the middle, hit at the line as he got it. He made it. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Washington's 30 to 28 win signified the first season sweep over the Cowboys in team history. The Redskins had beaten one top contender. The next bout would be for the title. The winner would become the Eastern Division champion and play host to a first round playoff game. Very rarely does one regular season game ever mean so much. Redskins defense took control from the start, holding the Cardinals to just seven first half points while creating scoring opportunities for Joe Gibbs scheming offense to capitalize on. But what we got the alert for 
Our blitz is from out here, so we got to be alert for our breakoffs. So all of our reads. I'm still on him, but he's getting an arm on you. You know, you're getting four or five yards, but he's really closing it hard. While the chilling pressure of December can cause even the finest teams to stiffen, Washington remained tempered by a warming air of confidence. Riggins' second quarter touchdown run helped give the Redskins a commanding 23-7 halftime advantage. But befitting a winner-take-all match, there would be no early knockouts. Both teams were prepared to go the full 15 rounds. With time running out, Washington needed a field goal to recapture the lead. 47 yard line is the spot. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. It's long enough, it's good! With one minute, 33 seconds left to go in the game, Mark Mosley has given the Redskins the lead back. Washington led 29 to 27. But in this season where the Redskins had to fight for everything they had earned, their title hopes would remain in the air until the final bell. Cardinals are out of timeouts. They got to kick the field goal. They're going to try the field goal. It'll be a 50-yard kick. They're not going to get it on the yard line. Six seconds. Redskins' third straight division title could very well have been their most satisfying, simply because they had fought so hard to attain it. The arms of the Washington Redskins should be raised high, because they, and they alone, captured a division which was full of top-notch contenders. No Burgundy and Gold fans will forget those two thrilling victories over Dallas and St. Louis which made the 1984 Redskins winners and still champions.